Right, so I've just got back from the tackle shop. It's a bit crowded here because obviously we've been using the other engine on the boat, so I've just been leaving this one here for now. Um, first things, while well, I think of it, a big thank you to the person that picked up my wallet outside the tackle shop that I dropped the other day. Um, there are some still some decent people around, there's some honest people. I don't know who you are, but thank you very much. Um, been a habit, a habit of doing that lately. The day before, I left my cameras on the boat. I mean, and yeah, things are just a bit weird. The day before that, I was as dizzy as hell. Yesterday, I literally got back. I sat down in the chair at 4 a.m. and I didn't wake up till 4 a.m. the next morning. I don't sleep for more than a few hours because of my back. And I think it's just exhaustion. I've been doing 3.30 fishing trips every day now for a few months. I mean, I know there was some bad weather we had for a couple of weeks where I didn't go fishing, but I think I've just been you know, pushing the limits, you might say. Anyway, I bought a new spinning rod. Now I picked this one up, and this one cost me about 12 quid. <laughs> I know what you're gonna say, bloody cheapskate, that's what you're gonna say. I know, I know. Um, now there's a reason I bought this particular one, is it's a Mitchell. Now the Mitchell stuff isn't expensive. Uh, those reels I've been using for the boat, uh, they're cheap, cheerful, but they've lasted so long and they were Mitchell. And also this rod is slightly thicker, slightly stiffer. Reminds me of the older one I was using, so, which was really quite good. I mean, for bass, I, I, some of these spinning rods that you buy, they're very whippy and they're okay probably for braid because you need that bend, but they are, I find, a little bit too whippy, especially when you get a larger fish because I know they bend and it's all good for the fish, but when you strike, they're a bit too soft. And when you bring them in, if you run out of bend on a really big bass, it's it's not fun. So, yeah, um, decided to go with that one. And I was actually going to buy another one that was there, the same as this one. But, um, so we'll try this out and see what happens. And if I break it, it doesn't matter. But now, in all seriousness, this is the spare rod I bought. I bought this one. I did see it. I did like it, actually. And for 12 quid, I thought I'll buy that as a backup. Because, you know, I've been breaking a few rods recently, in recent times. So I thought I'll just get a spare one so we've got a spare spinning rod in case I do break one this this is the one I bought now I went through looking at all the rods um, I didn't look at the names I didn't look at um, weights anything like that all I did was look at the construction look at the how whippy they were looked at obviously the height and just generally I knew what I was looking for I mean I know what I'm looking for in a rod and that's all I did I didn't bother looking like I say looking at anything else apart from that and I picked this one up and I decided that this was going to be the one. And planes just flying over. We'll be gone in a sec. Even with COVID, it just seems there's planes flying back and forth all the time, even when you're filming. So yeah, this is the one I bought. I picked it up, decided to buy this one, then looked at more detail who made it and what it was. I didn't actually know it came in a case either. This is what I found out later on when I bought it. But this, it's a pen which is quite fitting because I do like pen stuff. Um, that reel I bought a little while back, that's a pen, that can go on it. Um, so yeah, it was quite nice to see that it was this make. Now, this is a Pen Regiment 2 Spin Series. And this is, this is, this is one hell of a tube. This is over in the engineering at its best. I mean, you could, you, yeah, you could fly around the world with this thing, so. I don't think I'll be keeping it in that, so how long the rod will last, I don't know. But very useful if I ever travel around, which possibly could be happening when this COVID's said and done. We might do some uh, trips. Might go across to the UK, might go across to Europe. Might even go up to Sweden and do some fresh water stuff. I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but let's see what happens with all the, the uh, virus and that to start with. I, I can't be dealing with all that at the moment, that's for sure. So there we have it, this is what it looks like, let me get rid of that, it's just uh, advertising, I'm telling you some details, it is, I'll give you the details if it says, it's a SW spin, 2.7 meters, or 270 meters, 20 to 50 gram, which is weak cast lures, most of the most common one I use is about 21 grams, I use smaller ones as well, sort of 16, so, about right, and there you have it, cork handles, plastic or graphite screw thready bit but it's a nice looking rod tip is like this it is it, it's quite stiff actually I think it's I don't know because obviously I snapped the end off the um, vendetta I think it's a slightly bit 
a slight stiffer than the Vendetta and that's what I wanted because the Vendetta was nice and it got better when I snapped the tip off not for its height but for its the bendiness and that I you know it, it was okay but I prefer personally I prefer rods to be a little stiffer some people won't but for me I like them to be a little stiffer it depends what you're targeting if you're going after a really big fish I don't like them too too bendy I've got one which is really bendy it's a great rod but I almost lost a big bass once uh, about an eight pounder I got it near the edge of the rocks and it dived and the rod just obviously bends to take that out but it got all the way down into the kelp without even losing line and then it got stuck in there and I had to lever it up luckily it pulled out but came very close to losing that fish right against the edge which would have you know and it kind of put me off the uh the two bendier rods but like i say with um braid it probably counteracts it a little bit as well without having those stretch in the line so there we go that's what we're going to be trying out with and like i say it's quite fitting because it'll fit the uh the reel we bought what was the reel we bought i can't even remember it was a um it was a, it's there, there's the box there. It was a Pen 460 Slammer, so I'll we'll stick that on it for now. I could also put the little multiplier I bought with the braid on it. We'll try both. And I'll just be giving that a bit of test. Because I've been, lately, I've been using some of the fresh water rods, but they're, again, they're a little bit whippy, a little bit soft for what I like. So we'll see how we get on with that. Another morning. A bit later today. The tide's still coming up actually. There's about another hour to high tide. I'm gonna go out and fish in the dinghy again. We've got the just setting up the engine and everything, uh, fueling up and that. And yeah, we're gonna head out. Now we've got a bit of overcast sky, which I always prefer when I'm fishing, like lure fishing or bass fishing, that kind of thing. They tend to feed a little more, although it's not always the case, but it's gotta be fish there in the first place. Uh, we've come down later obviously because of the tide. What we're going to be doing is we're going to go out in the dinghy, going to fish around a bit, and then when the tide gets a bit higher, going to head out and do all the pots because I've got to get those baits today. I haven't done them for a few days. And I think tomorrow might be a bit breezy, so I might give tomorrow a miss, take a day off. But uh, yeah, I just noticed a few uh, bits of motion in the water right in the shallows here, so might be fish right in the bay. See what the seagulls say. They're hanging out. I'll have to wait a little bit because they don't get onto the fish like until it's literally daylight quite often. So we'll see. Anyway, let's get launched and we'll see you out there. So like I was saying, um, we'll go out the tide down a little bit because when the water starts to slacken, otherwise, like I say, you burn twice as much fuel with the, the tide. Plus, you can't do much until the tide eases off anyway. Not when it comes to the crab pots. Right, not much happening here. I think we'll move 
something else. But what we'll do is we'll um, put this the trailing lure on. Just trail up to the spot. These lures, you get a hold of those lures really well. And I've got no gloves or anything here, so I'm going to get spine probably. One little bass. Surprising it took that lure actually. I know that they do, some of the small stuff does take big lures, but that was quite small. Right, let's try casting a bit again. One thing though, this is the Vendetta rod. Um, I snapped this rod, snapped the tip off like about a half a foot or a foot or something off the end of it. Yeah, about a foot. And I actually prefer the action now that it's actually broken because I like a rod that's got a little bit more stiff. I found it just a little soft. I mean, it worked fine, but it was just a little soft. Probably good for braid, maybe. Ooh, that, was, that happened quicker. Patricia getting smaller. <laughs> Chuck it back straight away. There's no set area either. They, you know, they move around, and sometimes it'll be good, really good, just over there. Sometimes over there. Sometimes here. Thing with bass, they go anywhere and everywhere. They could even be in less than a foot of water along the edge of the beach somewhere. In fact, quite often that's where they are. I think this might be a mackerel. Yep, mackerel. ear-piercing sound. If you've ever sat near one that's got a nest not too far away, it'll scream at you all day. It'll drive you nuts. By the time you go home you'll just have ringing in your ears.
Right, well, we, the camera went off as we came to the boat, but I didn't bother turning it back on. Um, net, log, and we'll head back off again. Also, wanted to just check the boat was fueled up, ready for when we. Um, Yeah, we came out yesterday, which you probably see in another video, but um, I don't know if I mentioned at the time when I came out yesterday, I was so dizzy. And I mean, from the time I left home to the time I got down, I was falling all over the place. It was like I'd been on the, on the beers, you know? But uh, I don't know what all that was all about. Anyway, that was when I uh, cancelled going to the pots yesterday because of that reason. Simply, I was just, I just, my balance was all over the place. I don't know what was going on. I decided it was a bit dicey to start heading out, to, or even standing up like this, but head out, heading out to do pots. But I feel fine today. Really weird how things pop up like that, you know? It's just out of nowhere. I only get a migraine if you've ever had a migraine before. All of a sudden, well, for me, I've had it a couple of times really bad where your, your eyesight goes really weird. You sort of get this flickering, and then you get this immense pain in your head. When I was a kid in school, many, 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 many years, years ago, I used to suffer from migraines. I used to get migraine every Monday. <laughs> How ironic, eh? But no, seriously, I used to get these, used to go to school and that, get home, and every Monday I'd be suffering with so much pain in the head. It was always a Monday, it was just so weird. And I ended up seeing doctors and that, and they were trying to keep an eye on what I was eating and all sorts. I never found out what it was, but as I got sort of teenager kind of thing, um, slowly they disappeared. But it, it was awful. Because you knew it was cut every Monday just get back with this horrendous pain in the head. Never did find out why. Try and cast on a boat, maybe there's a big fish that's... Right, here we are. Not much water below us. So yeah, you should get some lovely bass in here. I think there's a lot of weed here though. Yeah, a lot of weed. I don't know how clear you can see. I might uh, show you in a minute. But behind me is um, what's called Portlet Beach or Portlet Harbour. Like a little harbour of boats and that. This is where we, I grew up as a child around here. Got like a little pine forest up the back there. I'm gonna have to move from here. There's <laughs> too much weed. I'll just get. We'll move up a bit that way. We might try, go and try another little bay called Pesary. This over here is uh, this is Pesary Bay. times I've been to it. Mind you, when I used to come here a lot, I was only a little kid fishing, so I was still learning a lot. I hadn't mastered the art of you know, the skills yet.
So I just, uh, obviously the camera went, the battery went, and I just got back on the boat and I realised the camera was rattling away. I had a closer look and it had almost unscrewed underneath. I could have lost the camera very easily if it turned a little bit more. Luckily we caught it in time. I'll have to watch that, it's the vibration of the dinghy. Right. Let's okay. Okay. steel bit. Okay. Fueled up in that earlier on when I stopped off to get the net, so we're good to go. Go and do some fishing, get some pots, and I'll catch up with you when I'm out there. Well, that's a big crab. This time of year. 
And there is a lobster. It's a nice one. Look at that. I wasn't expecting that, but it looks good. Looks in good condition, that one. We might take that. I'm going to keep it myself, that one. But, um, like I say, you do get the odd nice lobster up here. And there's the proof. But you don't get a lot, that's the only thing. And small spiders. Possibly. Is this lobster going to be big enough? Here it's getting I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Looks like quite a big shell. Yes, it is. Superb. Very shallow here. I'm putting the pot here because I have had prawns here with like the shrimp head. This one's undersized, but it's quite funny, it's turning into, into a uh, awesome lobster pot, this thing. Well, I was looking for my gauge, but I can see that's too small, so I'll put it back. What else have we got? We've got, we've got another small spider crab, a little weedy one. Very small. Very small. Velvet swimming crab. And dog whelks. Oh, it's starting to rain. Oh well, let me, uh, ch I'm going to change the bait in it today because this bait's going to get a bit nasty. And I don't know what prawns feel like a fresh or old, I really don't know. Managed a few lobsters as you may be able to see in the bucket there. Quite nice ones, some nice male ones in there. And we picked up about 30 mackerel when we're out. Lovely fresh mackerel. Just cleaned them all up. They're ready to go in. And that's it. Well, we had the bass this morning that we caught and put back. Just a bit of fun. So, 
yeah, it's been all right. Like I say, it's a bit quiet at the moment, but that's the way it goes sometimes. But it's been a pleasant enough day. It's been nice weather. And of course, we're going in with some lobster and mackerel, so can't complain. Right, I better get back down to the beach.